My one ambition and my daily prayer is that I may live long enough to make beautiful the capital of the one country on earth in which there is liberty. Brumidi, 1855 Few people know that the artist who created in the mid-19th century the breathtaking frescoes adorning the Capitol in Washington, D.C., was the Greek-Italian artist and restorer, Constantino Brumidi. For almost 25 years, from 1855 until his death in 1880, Brumidi made this ambitious undertaking his final and most auspicious work. When asked by the writer and friend Smith D. Fry why he was willing to accept such a modestly paid commission by the Capitol's architect, Thomas U. Walter, and the supervising engineer of the Capitol, Montgomery C. Miggs, he declared, I am not interested in getting famous or rich. Indeed, Brumidi substantiates his declaration by accepting the offer to leave behind a successful and promising career in New York City. In this dramatized documentary, we will reenact the life and work of Constantino Brumidi through the performance of an established actor. Scenes will be shot in his home and studio and in some interior rooms of historical importance, as well as some exterior locations that will convey visually the atmosphere of 19th century Rome and Washington, D.C. This will be the moving story of an idealistic artist who fought throughout his life for what he believed were universal ideals, freedom, equality, and democracy. A man who endangered his life and security of office as fresco painter and sergeant of the Vatican Civil Guard by refusing to take arms against his fellow Italians in the revolt against the Papal State for a unified and democratic Italy as led by Garibaldi. We will live through his falling out of favor as an esteemed fresco painter of the Pope and his sentencing to 18 years in jail and eventual pardon by the Pope himself. We will then follow his exile from Italy and migration to the United States of America. His struggle to re-establish himself in a new country and literally a new world in New York City and his daring departure from the emerging artistic center of America to the artistic anonymity of the political capital, Washington, D.C. We will witness his pioneering proposals for the frescoes he envisaged for the Capitol building that were eventually embraced by the architect Walter and engineer Miggs. Then we will explore the potent portrayals of the freedom fighter Cornwallis suing for cessation of hostilities, the apotheosis of Washington on the canopy, the charge of Stony Point, and numerous other works showing the magnitude and scale of this unprecedented undertaking for the United States. Later he painted the advisor's quarters and the president's room. While for the West Corridor, known as the Brumidi Corridor, he made 13 landscapes of scenes from Western America. We recognize in Brumidi's fresco paintings his spark and passion for liberty and democracy and his struggle to convey his personal beliefs and experiences of injustice from Italy. In the frescoes of Brumidi, we clearly see his view of these ideals through the figures of the mythological gods of ancient Greece, the oldest democracy in history. Gods such as Athena, Poseidon, Hermes and Aphrodite, alongside legends of the newest democracy in history, such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, the great patron and financier of the U.S. Revolution, Robert Morris, Samuel Morse, and the inventor of the steamship, R. Fulton, to name a few. We will empathize with Brumidi's fight against the prejudices of the Art Commission of the U.S. Capitol in commissioning a non-American, but also with the support of people such as Senator Jefferson Davies, a staunch supporter of his work, 
who insists that he complete the capital. For long periods of time, funds are not allocated for the completion of the capital, but Brumidi is so impassioned to finish his vision that he works smaller commissions in the interims and refuses to move from Washington. On April 12, 1861, civil war breaks out. Troops are stationed at the capital, which is used as a hospital, but Bumidi continues, even under these circumstances, to work, decorating the Senate corridors and repairing other decorations in the Senate wing. In 1878, Brumidi is commissioned to paint the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol. On October 1, 1879, while working on the frieze of William Penn signing the treaty with the Indians, the by now 74-year-old Brumidi nearly falls from a 180-foot scaffolding, which he is forced to cling on to, till at the end of his strength he is rescued by his assistants. Even though seriously injured, he returns the following day to continue painting, but is unable to do so. Insisting that he finish the work himself, he continues to work at his home studio. But his chronic asthma has worsened his condition, and he becomes gravely ill. Within months, on the 19th of February, 1880, Brumidi dies alone and impoverished in his home in Washington. The U.S. government recognized his contribution by placing a commemorative plaque on his grave in 1952. 72 years after his death. The words on that plaque are, My one ambition and my daily prayer is that I may live long enough to make beautiful the capital of the one country on earth in which there is liberty. Brumidi, 1855.